Hello, everyone. My name is Gav McDonough, and I'm the Educational Action Supporting Officer at ERN EuroBloodNet, and I'm happy to welcome you to the sixth session of Genomed for All, an ERN EuroBloodNet educational program on artificial intelligence and hematology for an expert audience. On that note, I'm happy to introduce our speaker for the sixth session, our speaker, Marina Martello, and the topic is Use Case MM Overview of Results from both a technical and clinical perspective, plus specific onboarding requirements, for example, minimal data set. Marina Martello is a researcher at the Institutes of Hematology uh, at the Serenoli, Department of Medical and Surgical Sciences at the University of Bologna, Italy. She is a member of the Molecular Biology Lab Group, mainly involved in translational research of lymphoproliferative diseases, particularly focusing on MM, genomic, and immunophenotypic characterization, characterization and minimal re residual disease analysis by means of the most innovative approaches such as artificial intelligence and liquid biopsy. So with that introduction, I hand off the floor. Thank you very much for joining, Marina. The floor is all yours. Uh, thank you, Gavin. So we can start uh, with the presentation. Uh, in today's presentation, we will uh, have a brief uh, introduction on uh, multiple myeloma, so the, the, the disease uh, that is the object uh, of this part of the Genome and for uh, All project. And we will see some uh, um, some um, new insights about clinical and the biological context of the disease. And in particular, we will see the current risk definition of the disease and the last update that are the Barcelona criteria. And then uh, we will see uh, some example uh, uh, that have been uh, uh, published in literature, in literature recently about the uh, artificial intelligence implementation in multiple myeloma. Then we move. Uh, we will move to uh, the core part of the presentation, that is the uh, multiple myeloma use case in the Genomed for All project. And so we will see the data set that have been provided in the context of uh, the Genomed for All project. And uh, uh, in the third part of the presentation, we will uh, have uh, an overview of the results uh, produced. Uh, in the context of the Genomed for All from the different uh, partners uh, of the project that, that are the Università Politecnica de Madrid, University of Turin, and the University of Bologna. So starting with the introduction on the disease, maybe you are aware that the multiple myeloma is a plasma cell disorder. And uh, there are no uh, unique markers that define the disease. So the, 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 bi the biology of the disease is very heterogeneous. And it is uh, characterized by a, um, a clinical outcome. So patient, uh, as you can see from this slide, patient uh, after receiving therapy uh, might have a decrease uh, of uh, uh, tumor cells. Uh, so patient can be characterized by different level of residual cells. Uh, and so the clinical outcome uh, might be influenced by the, the quantity of the residual cells and the persistence of these tumor cells. So patients, uh, um, uh, even though the, the new, new therapy are very effective, the experience relapse uh, due to the persistence of these tumor cells. So um, the biology of the disease uh, is um, so complex because uh, uh, it can be resumed by uh, four different layers of heterogeneity. So multiple myeloma uh, might have an intratumor heterogeneity, so the plasma cells uh, can be very heterogeneous uh, um, inside uh, one patient but it can be also different from one patient to another. So the disease, uh, from a biological point of view, can be very different from one patient to another, another one. And uh, um, two other factors can complicate this picture, uh, that are the time and space, because uh, um, recent insights uh, in the last years uh, have highlighted that multiple myeloma can uh, change over time 
So uh, the biology that we know at the diagnosis of the disease uh, might be different when the patients experience relapse and also can be um, different in space. Uh, so we know from, uh, in particular, from the latest studies uh, by Leo Rasche that uh, um, if we study in particular uh, the different lesion, different from the bone marrow, so other lesions uh, that are spread into the body, this lesion can be different can be different in the molecular uh, at molecular level from the lesion present in the bone marrow. So the current the current multiple myeloma risk stratification scores that are uh, illustrated in this slide are used in this moment in order to predict. Uh, uh, the, uh, the risk status of the patient uh, at diagnosis. Unfortunately, uh, this, uh, this current risk stratification are able to uh, stratify only a, a small portion of high risk patients, uh, approximately around 20%. And they use, uh, uh, in particular, these are the latest uh, uh, published in literature, and they use uh, uh, genomic feature and also serum features. Uh, we know uh, that um, we know from literature, from recent studies, that uh, this current risk stratification are uh, quite suboptimal because. Uh, uh, they can identify a risk patient, uh, but also with, uh, among the standard risk patient, uh, some patient experience, uh, uh, for example, um, relapse, uh, early relapse. And so it is known that uh, uh, the risk, uh, uh, the status risk of the patient uh, might be defined uh, but, uh, by study also other characteristics. Uh, different uh, from the serum, uh, the genomic uh, studies, uh, uh, so studies so far. Uh, as you can see from this slide, uh, indeed, uh, we can consider also uh, the circulating plasma cells uh, or, for example, gene expression profile and so on. So what we know uh, so far in multiple myeloma is that the current use uh, risk stratification are suboptimal. In, in particular, uh, um, Regarding the genomic, uh, uh, the genomic panorama of uh, uh, lesions in multiple myeloma, uh, there are very, um, it is very challenging to uh, define which are the, um, the high risk feature and the cost segregation of, the, of these different features, since uh, they are very, um, uh, in the current risk stratification are studied by FISH and the new methods are, uh, have been included so um, very recently. So it's very, it's very difficult in this moment to define the importance of the cost segregation of this uh, alteration. As you can see from this slide, this is a, uh, one of the latest uh, study published in literature. And you can see that patient can be characterized not only by a single alteration, but uh, um, rather, but uh, uh, not by a single alteration, but uh, from a list of uh, um, alteration that happens uh, together in the same clone. This is the latest, uh, uh, in this slide you can see the latest uh, release of uh, um, consensus stratification that again did not take an, into account of uh, um, the world genomic heterogeneity that we have uh, seen in the, in the slides before because uh, it takes into account, uh, it uh, considers the, uh, the study of the PP53 PP gene uh, by sequencing, because uh, it renowned that uh, um, not only the deletion, so the copy number, but also the mutation on the gene are very important, but uh, only some kind of segregation are taken into, into account. And, um, it considers only the genomic heterogeneity of the patient. So what are, in this moment, uh, based on this observation, the possible area of uh, uh, improvement in order to define uh, this uh, unmet clinical need in multiple myeloma that are represented by this patient? 
So the possible solutions are represented by, of course, uh, um, the improvement of uh, multifactors integration, the improvement also of the timing uh, when we want to define the risk uh, to, to assess the risk of the patient, and also a consideration uh, uh, should be done also on tumor size. Um, for the scope of the, today's presentation, uh, I will talk about uh, of multifactor integration. And in particular, we can improve uh, the consideration of multifactors uh, in order to define the risk of the patient by implementing artificial intel intelligence and also deep learning systems in order uh, uh, to develop a decisional algorithm uh, to be used to improve uh, patient management. Uh, in this moment, uh, there are uh, two uh, excellent uh, experience uh, of uh, implementing of the implementation of this kind of method in literature, multiple myeloma. The first one is uh, resuming this slide, and uh, authors uh, have used a machine learning model in order to predict uh, those patients uh, that are um, that more easily reached the uh, uh, undetectable MRD status. And the innovation resides in the fact that, that this author co consider very um, um, a wide list of uh, uh, features uh, present at the diagnosis of the patients. And these features uh, derive from uh, a very different kind of experiments uh, and are data derived from uh, a wide range of um, uh, experiments such as uh, phenotype data, uh, genomic data, serum data, and so on. So by considering this wide range of data, they are able to predict uh, with uh, high confidence uh, the um, probability to reach uh, the undetectable MRD status that is uh, beneficial for the patient. The second uh, uh, example in literature that use uh, uh, this machine learning method is, has been published recently and uh, uh, consider a wide, uh, um, high number of experiments that use omics method and it uh, consider uh, uh, a high number of newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, approximately 4,000. Uh, and uh, in, in this paper, the author demonstrated that uh, uh, it can be uh, created, uh, uh, so this new algorithm called IRMA, uh, for estimating the individualized risk and treatment, uh, treatment variance for newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. Uh, and this tool is also um, available for the research community online in order to predict uh, the response of, uh, of patient, of a specific patient to a specific treatment. So in the context of Genomed for All project, and in particular in the multiple myeloma use case, our aim, based on the premise, uh, on the previous premises, is, um, is the following research question. So can we identify predictors of early relapse? So uh, those feature uh, that uh, can uh, predict a rel early relapse of a patient, so within 12 or 18 months from the start of therapy, based on the integration of this uh, different nature uh, of uh, data, so genomic, clinical, and imaging data. To this purpose, uh, the, our group here in Bologna uh, provided uh, for the project, uh, for the aim of the project, uh, two kinds of data set, uh, the so-called Bologna data set uh, that include uh, uh, 253 newly diagnosed multiple myeloma patients, mainly treated by a proteasum inhibitor-based triplet therapy at the induction. And uh, these patients are patients also that uh, underwent to uh, autologous stem cell transplantation Usually, they receive a consolidation therapy and then a maintenance therapy. For this data set, we provide uh, uh, three different kinds of data. So the genomic data that includes uh, uh, 79 features uh, derived both uh, from two kinds of uh, genomic method uh, that are SNP array and ultra-low-pass whole genome sequencing. 
and also clinical data have been provided um, that include uh, 60 features uh, such as biochemical response to therapy and also survival data uh, and finally imaging data uh, that include the PET-CT PET -CT scans uh, and also uh, the, the PET data annotated by the clinician. Um, on the other side of the slide, you can also see the second data set that we, have, uh, that we provided uh, for the uh, scope of the project, uh, that is the COMPASS data set. This data set is... Uh, um, is freely available online based upon a request, and it includes 1,144 newly diagnosed multiple myeloma patients with uh, uh, both genomic and clinical data. It, it is, does not include uh, imaging data, and uh, um, all the data have been downloaded from the site indicated. So two steps have been uh, figured out by our group in Bologna in this, uh, for this data set. The first one was a data set harmonization, since uh, um, uh, particularly for uh, genomic data, uh, they derive uh, from different uh, molecular techniques. So the output data were very different. So this step was very important in order to provide to the other research group uh, a um, clean data set to, uh, to perform uh, the downstream analysis. So during this harmonization, for example, all the, inform all the information provided, for example, for amplification or deletion of a specific chromosome, uh, have been uh, um, annotated all uh, in the same way. Uh, so the one derived from the Bologna data set and the one derived from the Compass data set uh, all uh, are being annotated in the same way. And the second step that have been uh, done by the Bologna group uh, regarding also the uh, pipeline for the genomic data processing. Uh, the pipeline is illustrated in this slide and uh, in um, for this pipeline deposition, um, the pipeline has been um, uh, optimized and also uh, uh, uploaded to the Sineca platform. And as you can see, this pipeline uh, consists in a first part of preprocessing pre of genomic data. Uh, so. Um, this pipeline uh, permits the uh, process of the FASTQ file uh, that, have, uh, that you receive in output from the genomic analysis. And in the second part, uh, when you obtain the BAM files uh, with this pipeline, you can uh, do a, a post-process of the file in order to obtain the, um, the table file that, co that contains the copy number variation uh, data. Uh, all these pipelines have been uh, optimized and uh, uploaded by uh, the Bologna group uh, in the Seneca platform, and it is available uh, um, and to, uh, to, to be used for other genomic data. So the ongoing analysis uh, in the context of uh, multiple myeloma use case uh, are mainly three in this moment, and regarding the federated learning, um, where the University uh, Politecnica of Madrid have uh, released some data, uh, then the data modeling and the machine learning training algorithm for risk prediction, uh, and we illustrated some data from the University of Turin, and also the last part regarding the radiomics, uh, mainly conducted, mainly performed by the um, University of Bologna. Regarding federated learning, uh, the group uh, from uh, um, headed by um, the professor Santiago Bello from Madrid 
have dedicated, uh, have used uh, the data set, uh, the Bologna data set and the, 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 the Compass data set in order to uh, define the, uh, the possible implementation of federated learning in a uh, real context. So the federated learning, also known as collaborative learning, is a, a machine learning technique that can train an algorithm via multiple independent sessions. And each of these sessions can use its own data set without sharing data. Uh, so to this uh, uh, purpose uh, and for the next, uh, uh, for a next future possible use of this federated learning, uh, we discuss the data set uh, with the um, UPM group in order to uh, help us uh, in order to select the feature uh, to be used uh, for uh, the, the downstream analysis. Then the synthetic data have been generated by UPM and then validated. Uh, in the first part of uh, dataset discussion, uh, dataset have been uh, uh, further cleaned and uh, the work of uh, federated learning have been done on a uh, final dataset on one of 1,300 uh, uh, 1, uh, approximately patient. The synthetic data generation has been done through a, a model, a machine learning model that is a variational autoencoder model that is able to train 15 different seeds. And the model, as you can see from this slide, is also able to generate a, a missing value mask that can reproduce the real life situation. And after generation, these synthetic data have been validated uh, also to test their validity. Um, and three, two specific parameters have been used in order to test the utility of this synthetic data. Uh, in particular, the survival analysis, analysis, and in particular the C index and the classification in order to predict the early relapse. And as you can see, both the completed data and the incomplete data uh, demonstrate uh, good uh, performances. Uh, in the last part of the validation of uh, the, um, pos uh, the possible scenarios produced by this model, uh, some preliminary data have been produced in this context. And uh, uh, one of the most interesting uh, results is that the, the, federate, the federated learning in this case uh, uh, can be especially recommended in the settings where uh, uh, some uh, some data uh, might be missing. That uh, are uh, that is the situation that must uh, uh, reproduce the normal the real life uh, situation. Uh, also, in this context, uh, further analysis uh, are ongoing in order to uh, to validate the final results. In the second uh, part of, the, of this overview or result, uh, of results in the context of the Genomers for All project, uh, these, are re these are results produced by University of Turin and regard uh, the data modeling for risk prediction. In particular, as you can see from this illustration, the um, the Turin group have used uh, the CMV data, so the data derived from uh, uh, copy number alteration, and they always use uh, a variational autoencoder machine learning model uh, in order to uh, predict the risk of a particular group of patients obtained by a k-means clustering. Uh, the model has been trained in the COMPASS dataset, uh, in particular on 837 patients. Um, so, uh, as you can see from this graph, from this uh, UMAP uh, 
plot uh, four different clusters have been identified with a specific uh, C index. Um, these clusters have been further characterized by the presence of specific, specific copy number alteration uh, that are uh, shown in this, uh, um, this plot. Um, and uh, once the, the model has been trained on the Compass dataset, it has been further validated in the Bologna dataset. Um, and as you can see from this UMAP, uh, we also, we, the, the Turing group uh, have uh, still identified the four clusters uh, similar to the Compass uh, dataset. And in particular, these clusters uh, uh, have been characterized by the presence of specific copy number alteration. For example, uh, the cluster one uh, contain, uh, is characterized uh, uh, in particular by the presence of uh, one Q and deletion 13 Q. And uh, uh, the both data set have been further um, characterized by um, so and, and further analysis have been performed in order to verify which are, from this analysis, uh, the feature, the genomic feature and the clinical feature that best uh, predict for uh, um, early relapse. And uh, as you can see from this graph, both the Compass and Bologna dataset display uh, a similar uh, a similar outcome in um, the the variability of uh, um, every feature in determining a specific uh, risk. In particular, for example, we can see the protective effect of uh, the the transplant of having received received or not the transplant. And also um, the effect of every single genomic alteration have been analyzed. And as a clinical outcome, uh, we can see that uh, from this analysis, we can uh, um, outline a specific outcome for every cluster we have identified. Uh, and we can see from this Kaplan-Meier curse that uh, patient, uh, particularly deriving from cluster one and cluster two, have uh, a very, um, a particular worse uh, prognosis uh, with respect to the other cluster identified by this analysis. The last uh, set uh, of results uh, um, obtained in the, in the context of Genomed for all uh, multiple myeloma use case uh, regarded radiomics. Uh, in this uh, last part of the project, uh, mm, data have been produced by the University of Bologna and the group of Professor Castellani, and are uh, the process of uh, um, data analysis have been illustrated in this image, in this schema, and as you can see, uh, data have been obtained from uh, more than 200 patients, and we diagnosed multiple myeloma patients. For whom we have provided both the clinical data, the genomic data, and also the uh, PET CT scans. These images have been further processed uh, by the University of Bologna, and in particular, the, uh, some data have been further processed, such as the, the volume of uh, uh, the volume of interest of the lesions. Um, sorry, I lost the slide. Okay. <laughs> Uh, particularly for the volume of interest that uh, describes every specific lesion and also the extension of uh, each specific lesion. Uh, once the images uh, have been uh, uh, obtained, uh, for each images, uh, uh, um, 
features uh, have been extracted and in particular three kind of features have been extracted so um, features of uh, uh, the so-called uh, first order, the shape and, and also the texture of the images and uh, in this specific moment uh, uh, several survival analyses are ongoing in order to define uh, which of this feature from uh, extracted from the images uh, are uh, the most uh, uh, um, useful uh, in order to predict uh, uh, the outcome and in particularly uh, and in particular the early relapse in this slide uh, indeed you can see um, all the um, all the step uh, that have been accomplished in order to process uh, uh, the, in, in the, the radiomic images and in particular also to, um, to obtain uh, in intensity data also from osteolithic lesion and not only from uh, the, the tracer captation derived from PET. So um, each kind of uh, data have been provided in the context in the context of this analysis. Okay, so um, based on this overview of uh, results, uh, we can uh, uh, conclude some analysis uh, are still ongoing, and the further data will be released in the next month. And so to wrap up uh, the information that, he, that we have seen uh, uh, so far in this presentation, we have seen that uh, uh, multiple myeloma is a complex, uh, is a complex disease, but uh, for sure it uh, still needs uh, a cure. It is, uh, there is a strong need to interconnect uh, different kind of data, such as uh, biological data, clinical uh, data, uh, and also imagine that in order to predict uh, the patient's uh, risk. A precise uh, prediction requires, uh, um, as we have seen, a uh, huge amount of uh, curated data, so data that have been also harmonized uh, in the first part uh, of uh, every project in order to be statistically significant and possibly uh, clinically meaningful. The artificial intelligence can help in this data management, uh, also for the interconnection and prediction of the aim uh, of the aim of the project. With the partner of uh, the Genomed for All project, uh, we aim at the integration of uh, uh, this different kind of data in a large port of uh, newly, myelo um, newly diagnosed multiple myeloma patients in order to identify the predictors of this early relapse uh, that can also refine the definition of high-risk patient. So in the future, these results uh, will contribute to an improved design of clinical trials and also a better patient management uh, towards a, a more precise uh, uh, medicine. So in, the last, in this last slide, uh, I would like to uh, thank all the people that have contributed to this, uh, to this work, and in particular the Bologna Group, the Molecular Biology Lab, the Clinical Research Unit, and the Nuclear Medicine that have contributed to the um, PET data, and also the group, uh, from, uh, the group of uh, Professor Castellani, uh, the group of uh, Universidad Politecnica de Madrid and the University of uh, Turin, the Professor uh, Piero Farisalli. And thanks uh, all of you for your attention. Great, thank you so much for your excellent presentation and for your time and expertise. Uh, perhaps we can have a quick look and see if there are any questions that have come in. Okay, so uh, the first one is, uh, would there be an opportunity to contribute to the Bologna Compass? Okay, data so sets? I can read the, the question. Okay. So the people uh, must uh, can hear. Okay, so yeah. the first, uh, um, 
the first question is, would there be an opportunity to contribute to the Bologna Compass dataset? Do you offer the harmonization integration support for external data? So in this moment, uh, um, I think that uh, uh, the data set can be expanded uh, and uh, there are uh, there a lot of efforts uh, have been uh, uh, done in this, um, in this perspective. And in particular, uh, as I told you during the presentation, the Bologna Group uh, have uploaded, uh, uh, for example, the pipeline of genomic data processing. So um, there is um, data can be expanded and um, people uh, can get in touch with uh, Professor Castellani or uh, Dr. Carolina Terragna in order to um, ask for uh, how to figure out uh, with the, the implementation of uh, your data. So the second one, thanks to, for the presentation, you mentioned the genomics pipeline have been already published. Is it open public resource? Okay, so <laughs> the same one uh, as, as I told you before. So it is, um, the, uh, it is uploaded in the um, uh, Sineca platform. So it is available for the scientific community. And uh, if you have uh, also any additional quest question, you can write uh, uh, and you can um, ask to uh, Professor Castellano or the Bologna Group in order to uh, have uh, some collaboration in that way. Great. Thank you so much for the questions from the audience and for your answers. It's, uh, it's been a real pleasure to be a part of this Genomed for All and ERN EuroBloodNet uh, program on artificial intelligence. And this program wouldn't be possible without the uh, generous support and expertise of experts like yourself. And I would like to take a special moment and thank my colleague, Diana, who has been very instrumental helping with everything, and uh, her colleague, Alexandra. And uh, if there are no more questions in the chat, I'd just like to thank you once again and uh, we hope to see you at future webinars as well. So thank you once again.